Welcome, welcome. It's so good to finally meet you. I appreciate it's been some time since uh, our last appointment together. But needless to say, I'm uh, just as excited to get started as I'm sure you might be. Now, we have a lot to get through today, and I think you're really going to love face mapping experience. Before we go any further, I will introduce you to our little face map. All right. Now, what I'll be doing is guiding you through each zone of the face. Now, face mapping is a Chinese um, long-standing Chinese approach to healthcare and to taking care of the body. All right. Now, it's holistic, fairly well understood, and parts of face mapping is actually deep rooted in science as well as um, in homegrown therapy. Okay. Now, I've been studying face mapping for well over 10 years now. And I am a firm believer in it. Even if you're coming here as a non-believer, if you're coming here from a purely scientific perspective, there's still a lot to be taken from. At the very least, it can be a relaxing experience. It can be comforting. It can be interesting. And at the very best, maybe it makes a real change in your life. Maybe you can find some really kind of impactful alterations and really helpful routines to adopt. Now, before we go any further, a very large part out of the very core of face mapping, you will find hydration. 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 Okay. With that in mind, Bear with me one second. We have here perhaps the finest mineral water available on this good earth. And this is extracted from Fiji. This is rainwater that's collected on mountain tops, allowed to run through the natural crevices and the healing restorative properties of the mountain find their way into the Fiji water. It's really quite famous. Um, it's all I ever drink and while water doesn't necessarily have the most flavor. It certainly does have it certainly does have the health and hydration. Crystal glass, because how else do you expect to drink Fiji water? Here. Now sip that gently. Don't drink it all at once. But I will expect that to be finished by the end of our session. And then for me to refill it and for you to drain it again. All right? Good. Now, as I said, I'm going to talk you through the map of the face. Then I'm going to cleanse your face a little bit to give us um, a blank canvas. Okay? And then I'll do a quick examination. Have a proper look. Um, each of your zones, we can discuss your diet and what might be impacting 
any redness, blemishes, breakouts that you might be seeing. Okay? Now please do get comfortable. This shouldn't take too long. And as I said, it should be as informative as it is relaxing. There'll be times where I will obviously be coming quite close. Okay. Shall we proceed? All right. Now, I will reintroduce you to our little friend here. So this This is our face. Maybe not quite to scale, but uh, the proportions and the features should be about right. Two eyes, a nose, mouth, a jaw, a chin. Okay, so let's start with zones one and three. Now, zones one and three in face mapping lead directly to our digestive system on the bladder specifically if you were to find yourself with uh, again a bit of redness uh, maybe even some dry skin which is quite common and even though this is considered a t-zone in dermatology and yes i am a fully qualified dermatologist but even though this is considered the T-zone in dermatology, you will find people uh, with, with kind of broken and dried skin, uh, redness, breakouts, and face mapping tells us this is a direct correlation to the diet. Perhaps they're allergic to something. And more importantly than that, dehydration. It doesn't take very much for the human being to become dehydrated. In fact, a large percentage of people walk around uh, almost every day dehydrated, not realizing that uh, they're thirsty. <laughs> but in all seriousness, the water that we take into our body is nourishing. And think of your body a little bit like a, a field with the sun beating down on it all day, the field dries out. The only way the field can replenish, hydrate, and stop itself drying out is by water. All right, so water will be a common theme throughout. It will be recurring, and I expect you should be drinking that Fiji water. All right, now zone two, just in the center here. If you were sick and perhaps you went to the doctor and he or she or they prescribe a course of antibiotics, you might find that you have some redness between the eyebrows. Um, if you're in what you would call clean health, you might find that um, you have again some, some dry skin, a couple of spots. That's because the very center of the head between the eyebrows. This correlates to our liver. Again, which is why if you are a course of antibiotics, uh, the liver doesn't really respond too well. It doesn't really like having constant new chemicals thrown at it. Even if you were taking a course of perhaps uh, vitamin C or uh, multivitamins, you might find a bit of redness between the eyes. And again, this is really because the liver is... Uh, creature of habit and this can be said um, for most of the body actually we don't like doing something new however the liver like anything else in the body will adjust but that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that it's it enjoys having to constantly recycle having to constantly replenish when you're filling your body with uh, of oxidants a lot of toxins 
and I, I don't mean multivitamins it's uh, it's an example of when you'll see a color change if you need vitamins in your body multivitamins are absolutely fine there is a case where you're taking more than you need if you already have a balanced diet uh, providing you don't have um, a deficiency in vitamin D for example maybe you live up in little Scotland where you don't see a lot of sun but um, providing you don't have a deficiency you shouldn't really need multivitamins, okay? So yeah, one in three, digestive, two, the liver, all right? Now, four, six, eight, and 10. Now we need to put the book down here a little bit because four, six, eight, and 10, the eyes in the ears. Now these are quite closely linked to the kidneys. However, four in ten. Of course, linked to the ear. Well, just um, being completely honest. If you find yourself with hot ears by hot I mean if they're red quite a lot of the time this could be uh, for a few reasons but specifically you might find it's because you have uh, an allergy of some kind um, and it's something that people it could be uh, an allergy but your kidneys are the first response to any fluids you're taking into your body. So if you're finding yourself with uh, red ears, and they feel hot, there is uh, the old tale that says, if you have red ears, somebody's talking about you. It's more likely that you're dehydrated. Okay, maybe you're very popular and uh, maybe they're talking about you because they love you. But be sure to increase the water intake if you find yourself with uh, a bit of red around your ears okay six and eight the eyes uh, also kind of windows to the kidneys and face mapping there's a whole kind of a uh, relation right across the center line of the face all right dark circles beneath the eyes bags of course sleep is <laughs> a very large contributing factor but again if you're allergic to anything find yourself dehydrated the body will always increase the the dark circles around your eyes all right and people wake up one morning with what is actually a full night's sleep and they're wondering why they have dark circles under their eyes perhaps they slept a little bit too long and they didn't drink anything before they got into bed all right. Now, five and nine. These lead and represent our respiratory system, meaning uh, how we breathe every day. If you are a smoker, if you are particularly unfit, if you don't exercise at all, you might find some broken capillaries around the cheeks, okay? You might find, again, dry skin. You might find a breakout. This is in our golden rule that you're drinking enough water but I said here you quite often you'll see some redness hyperpigmentation which just means redness it's a fancy scientific word for being red in the face um, if you do see yourself with some redness of course you could be in a hot room 
But if you're sitting at a regular room temperature and you find yourself flushing up, it's something to be mindful of. Okay. And the cheeks especially, it's uh, even more susceptible to allergies. And equally, and this actually relates back to the ears as well. And this is uh, less than than appetizing, but something that we should definitely cover because it's valid and real. The bacteria from our phones can often irritate our skin on the cheeks, and especially the redness can be a contributing factor to the redness in the ear that I mentioned prior. Now our phones, unfortunately, are a hotbed of bacteria. Be sure to give it a, a rub with an alcoholic wipe periodically. Make sure your hands are clean. And um, again, watch out for the, uh, the redness and the broken capillaries. Okay. Now, number seven. Number seven. This is, for me, perhaps the most important map on the face. The most common cause of human fatality in this world is still heart disease. Seven, direct relation to the heart. If you know somebody, if you yourself are suffering um, a very red, bright red nose, chances are they have high blood pressure. Not always, but more often than, than you would like to believe. See somebody with that redness again, broken capillaries, more hyperpigmentation. Make sure they're drinking water, less alcohol. Alcohol is a key contributing factor in increasing blood pressure. All right, and blood pressure again is the last thing we need to introduce to ourselves at any stage of our life. It's very easy to avoid. Okay, and while important to be happy in life. It's important that we don't starve ourselves of fun. Because life is fleeting. We might only be on this planet once. I understand and appreciate that completely. Okay? But we want to be here for a long time, not just for a good time. It's your doctor forced to, uh, to repeat that mantra. So the seven linked to the heart. Now, 13 and 11, these aren't always considered in face mapping. They're usually, um, you will see irritation. If you've been to the dentist, you might find 11, 13, Going flaky, again, that, that kind of uh, hyperpigmentation, very sensitive parts of, of the face, 11 and 13. And it's more really kind of related to the epidermis. Um, and it's, it has to be kept clean again with the phone, be mindful of bacteria. Okay. Now, the upper lip, 12, your chin, 12 A's. Okay. Now, the 12A, the very top of the lip. In face mapping, this is a direct link to your reproductive system. Okay. 12 and 12A share the same number because they're directly correlating to hormone balances as well. If you find yourself eating uh, foods that... Um, this might sound strange, but is very real. If you're eating foods that contain hormones of any kind, even low levels, this can have a very slight impact to your body's levels and your body will react, trying to rebalance your testosterone and your estrogen. All right, so if you find a redness, or perhaps extra hair, if you're, if you're female especially, um, you obviously have less facial hair. If you find yourself with more, it's because you're probably uh, 
taking a source of maybe even testosterone without realizing it, albeit might what we call microdosing. Be careful about the food that you eat, okay? Look at where it's being sourced from. Be careful and be wary of manufactured foods. Very recently there was a, a lot of talk about soy milk carrying estrogen in it. And that's true, it does have estrogen, but it's not the estrogen that we have in our bodies. It's a different strain and your body will largely ignore it. All right, so soy milk is fine to drink. <laughs> Better for you than dairy milk for sure. Now, full disclosure, I am not a vegan. Um, I understand the health benefits of being vegan. And I have the utmost respect for practicing vegans and vegetarians. But um, if you are non-vegan, non-vegetarian, be careful, be extra careful where you're sourcing your foods from, what's being added to it without you even realizing, okay? Good. Now the last and final mark is the neck. We can put our little guy down there. Now, 14, the neck. This is our relation to adrenal glands, our adrenaline. Now, it's very easy to confuse um, adrenaline imbalances in your body with simple sun damage uh, and irritation by fragrances. The skin on the neck is particularly sensitive. Do find yourself with some redness, uh, some flaky skin. It's not necessarily because you have too much or a lack of adrenaline. Okay, but be mindful of that. Now, we've taken you through the face map. We've talked you through the zones and how they correlate to our organs and our places in the body. What I would like to do now is just give your face a quick cleanse, as I said, blank canvas, and I'll do a quick inspection, looking for redness, looking for dry skin, looking for uh, any breakouts, pimples, spots, that kind of thing. And we can have a little chat at the end about your diet and what you might want to change and, and alter. All right? Good. We will be using a very light lemon cleansing foam. It's a beautiful smell. It is very delicate and very kind to the skin. We'll be applying a very simple cotton bud. Okay. Nothing uh, to worry about. Some people even find this part. Before I apply anything, I will of course be sanitizing my hands. warn you the 
I smoothed a little bit. But this tastes and smells. Rather, it smells. It certainly doesn't taste. It smells just like lemon cake. Add a little bit more. Okay. We're just going to do is have a little look and see what we can see. Okay, you will be taking mostly mental notes. If I need to write anything specific down, I can do. Okay, I do apologize. I have to get a little bit close here. We're starting with the uh, any antibiotics. Okay, we're just having a little look at some do here. This is just uh, between the eyebrows. Good. Okay. Um, again, you have a small uh, little cluster of little pimples there, just uh, between the eyebrows. But if you're not on any medication, and I would suggest really um, perhaps looking uh, while you're eating uh, when we uh, are done I'll have a uh, proper consultation with you about diet our approach to fitness and um, maybe consider our position on alcohol let's have a look at the cheeks into the nose. Just here. Nothing to worry about. Your skin actually looks great. Your natural complexion looks very healthy. You have a very nice pallor. Good color. Just a uh, couple of spots between the eyebrows. And then a little Okay, 
cheeks largely with the exception of the few uh, broken capillaries there looks fine I'd like to have a proper look at the nose though But nothing, um, nothing untoward there, nothing to worry about, I don't think. It's okay. No, the ears. look absolutely fine which is good nothing uh, to worry about there you have nothing to worry about anywhere at any point during the assessment um, it's all I've really seen and it's not an indication of anything serious it's a little bit of spot and the uh, broken capillaries all right let's gonna have a look at the lips and the chin to worry about there either um, a little bit of redness on the chin a little bit of dry skin but um, nothing to worry about okay that's just the neck smell good myself included let's not forget to uh, moisturize a little bit and drink lots of water okay good now again a couple of spots here the broken capillaries a little bit of uh, redness on the chin and uh, a little bit of flickiness on the neck. Perfectly normal. Nothing out of the ordinary. Nothing that you need to go and reevaluate your entire life over. All right. I myself have a little bit of dry skin. It's normal. It's expected. But we want to manage this and uh, make sure that we don't uh, worsen the situation. So I'd like you to very quickly talk me through um, what a day in the life of you might look like what time do you go to bed let's start there okay and then what time are you waking up see sleep deprivation is uh, is very real and has a huge contributing factor to our overall disposition our overall health and well-being and I myself am guilty of not getting enough sleep. It wouldn't be the first time that I walk in with huge bags under my eyes. But regardless, it's still my job to lecture you when you're not getting enough sleep. Small recommendation. 
if you are finding it difficult to get to sleep, you should try uh, popping open your phone, going to YouTube or uh, whatever app you like to use. But I would do a search on uh, something called ASMR and get yourself a pair of very lightweight headphones. Ideally ones that just pop into the ear. They don't go over the head. They don't want to restrict your sleep should you fall asleep with the headphones in. Search for ASMR and maybe it um, will be good for you. GB ASMR. Check out this young lady. Fantastic. Check out, if you like sounds, if you enjoy listening to sounds, ASMR Zeitgeist. ASMR Magic voice, if you like a quite a deep voice, the French whisper ASMR. Now I appreciate this might seem unusual. What is ASMR? If you've never heard of it, go and check it out. It's the perfect sleep aid. It's entirely free and it's really quite wonderful. It's a fantastic community as well. Anyway, okay, you're not sleeping enough. When you wake up, what uh, what do you usually eat, if anything? I'm not going to <laughs> recite how breakfast is the most important meal of the day because it's the longest point that your body goes without sustenance. But I just said it anyway, so there we go. <laughs> Be very, very mindful and very careful with skipping breakfast um, or eating the wrong kind of breakfast. Don't force your body into eating too many heavily oiled foods, fried foods. Give it something light, but something nourishing, okay? Even uh, a gentle cereal, uh, a whole wheat cereal, is a nice way to start your, your day. It's a slow release of energy. It's wholesome, it's good for the heart. It's exactly what the doctor and are you working, studying? Okay. And is that coming with some degree of stress, I imagine? Understandable. Okay. Well, again, we're looking at their contributing factor. Having a busy work, study, social life can quite often see us abandoning and uh, neglecting our self-care and our self-love so again try to stay off the caffeine at least a little bit don't drink it before you go to bed and if you're going to drink it when you wake up in the morning as most of us do try and accompany it with a little bit of water even uh, no kind of official artificial added sugar but some fruit juices as well or a piece of fruit which would be even better nice whole wheat cereal, piece of fruit, um, and your cup of tea or coffee, if that's what you, your pleasure is, okay? So this is your day, and, and what does uh, exercise look like for you? Is it something you do regularly, not at all, uh, something you would like to do but can never find time for? Mm -hmm. Exercise is... Uh, is the bane of a lot of people's existence because they would like to exercise but they genuinely feel like they don't have the time. Now to that I would say it's remarkable how little time exercise actually takes. It's the thought that takes up the amount of space in our timeline. You can get out of your bed and literally run outside for 10 minutes and it's just 10 minutes. You would spend 20 minutes on your phone in bed trying to get out of bed. More importantly than the time allocation, it's just the routine. Make it part of your life. Just get up and do it for a couple days, and then you're like, well, this is what I do now. And I think it usually take a couple of months before it becomes indoctrinated to our routine. But if you can just force yourself to take five, six, seven weeks, of introducing a little bit of exercise a couple times a week let's say seven weeks 
by the end of those seven weeks, not only will you be healthier, it will then be part of what you do. So yeah, it still sucks. You're probably never going to enjoy it. I'm not going to lie to you. Maybe with the exception of some sport games and that kind of stuff. Endorphins if you're a runner, perhaps. I don't get endorphins, but... Um, just, well, what is seven weeks of your life? We could be on this planet for a very long time. Just take seven weeks. Do this one thing. And at the end of the seven weeks, you might find that you accept it now. It's part of what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. And the health benefits are, are almost limitless. You would see an immediate improvement in how you feel. You look slimmer. You feel healthier. Maybe you'll even bulk up. But your body will thank you for it. The body is full of organs and muscles that the more we use them, literally the stronger they become. We want a strong and healthy body, don't we? Absolutely. Okay. What we'll do is uh, I'll be writing a small report on the face map that I did for you. Some of the things that we've discussed today. And uh, pop that out to you. You can have a little look at it. And some more specific kind of recommendations as to what you can do to improve your overall health. It's been my absolute pleasure. You thought I would forget the water. I did not. <laughs> if you just uh, if you just take your glass of water, there's a very comfortable and reception you just sit there quietly not on your phone and sip the water take as long as you like and once you're done pop up to reception make sure that we've got your uh, your details to send your report out to we can send it electronically and physically and we will be in touch okay thank you so much for coming along today it really has been my Thank you.